Hey everybody, welcome to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel and this time out we're going to take a look at another Universal Audio plugin. We're going to take a look at the TubeTech CL1B. This is in a con con collabor collaboration with SoftTube, developed the plugin and is distributed um, along with Universal Audio. So we're going to take a listen to this on some drums and some bass and some keys and some acoustic guitars and kind of give you a feel for what this uh, sounds like and give you the lay of the land here. And then we're also going to compare it to the uh, studio. Studio One version of this plugin is part of their Fat Channel plugin. So if you're a Studio One user, you um, have the opportunity with the Fat Channel to purchase uh, this plugin as well. And we're going to kind of compare the difference just to see do they sound any different from each other? Are they similar? How does one stack up against the other? But before we get to that, if you like what you see in this video, hit that subscribe button below. Also go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. Get your five free mixing training courses. It's my gift to you just for visiting homerecordingmadeeasy.com. It's worth about $110 five free courses go there today and if you want to learn more about the craft and mixing in a very non-technical way so you and your home studio can produce professional sounding mixes great for beginners and intermediates check out what i have going on at mixingmadeeasy.net and all the links are in the description box below so now let's head on into studio one and here we are looking at the uh, soft tube with you along with universal audio the tube tech compressor cl 1B. Now this is a great uh, compressor here and I love that they have a nice large GUI here um, coming from SoftTube. Um, again, I always like to say to these plug-in companies, you got to make these nice big beautiful GUI so it's easier for people to read uh, and look at, especially old folks like me. A lot of the older plugins and still a lot of plug-in manufacturers make these tiny little GUIs and it's hard to read the knobs and, and really use the plug-in. They did a really nice job here as compared to the Fat Channel by PreSonus, which it's much, much smaller. And here it is here, kind of too tiny for me here from uh, PreSonus, but we'll get back to that in a second. So let's take a lay of the land here and show you what this compressor is all about. Pretty simple to use. On the left-hand side, we have a, low, a side chain low cut filter. So if you don't want the compressor um, to, um, uh, or the, the signal below a certain frequency to affect the way the compressor reacts, you can set that here at 80 Hertz or at 220. So if you're doing this on like a drum bus, which is what we're doing, if you didn't want that kick drum to kind of uh, um, over trigger the compressor here, you can always set that to 80 Hertz. And then that would uh, get rid of everything from 80 below, won't activate the compressor. We'll keep it off for right now. Uh, next to that, at the top uh, left-hand corner, we have our output volume here. Below that, we have our attack, slow to fast, all variable, okay? We have a ratio button here, two to one to 10 to one ratio here. We have our release here, fast and slow release, pretty uh, usual suspects, pretty standard. We have our threshold up here. And then we have our attack release selector where it can be set in manual mode, which means the attack and release you adjust manually. You can also have it um, fixed uh, in manual or you can have it fixed completely. We'll keep it on manual. The fixed is more dependent on the program material and it has some under the hood um, kind of settings there. Uh, we also have next to this, uh, to the right hand side, we have our parallel compression knob. We can set it to dry or wet and anything in between. That's great for parallel compression. We're gonna keep it wet, all wet for now. So we hear the total um, a signal being compressed. And then we have our meter selector here, the input, the compression and the output. We'll keep it on compressor, nice big VU meter here on the right. And then a power button here right beneath that. Pretty nice, pretty great looking. Um, plug-in. So we have this set up on, and I'll close this for a second, on a drum bus, bass bus, acoustic guitars, and a keyboard bus. Okay, now there are no plugins on this session. I like to do this and demo these plugins on a completely raw file, audio file, so you can hear the effect of just what this plugin is doing to our audio signal. So we have all of our drums down here in brown. We have that all being bussed over to a drum bus here, and we have the CL1B on that. So let's listen to this on some drums here and we'll kind of play around with this and see what it kind of does. So here we go. Okay, so we have no compression at all. We'll stay on a slow attack, maybe a fast release here. And a two to one, maybe like a three, four to one ratio for a bus. We'll back off, lower our threshold here. Start achieving some compression. Oops. And we'll shut it off. It's before. 
after. We put a little bit faster attack. You'll see it will get a lot more compression, obviously. Now we're really over compressing it. Our slowest attack. Our release time here. You can really get that pumping and breathing effect if you wanted to do that. So what I noticed on this compressor as I was playing a little around the, with it a little bit before we hit record here, is the threshold is very, very sensitive. Once you get to about this negative 20, in between negative 20 and negative 30, you just gotta move it, a, uh, or really just the pinch in it, and it really triggers really well, really uh, quickly. Same thing with the attack and release. These things are very, very sensitive. Um, there's not a lot of, you know, uh, movement in here to, to go from one extreme to the other. So as soon as you move that attack past the slow portion at all, you start really compressing pretty heavily. And again, that's before, after. If you wanna dial in complete dry signal, that's what we have here. That's not compressed at all if we're all the way on dry. If we want 100% compression. Okay, on the fixed manual switch, you can see we're really compressing pretty heavily. That's, that's not usable. <laughs> okay, we're only running probably like a three to one ratio here or so. This is probably be like a five to one, four to one ratio here. So that's what we that's what we have kind of going on on the drums there. Very musical, getting a nice sense of depth. Again, very very touch sensitive these these uh, these dials here. So it takes a little bit to get exactly what you want, but it can be dialed in pretty quickly. Let's listen to this on bass now. So we'll do the same thing on our bass bus. We'll do about a four to one ratio here. Maybe a little bit medium style attack, maybe a little slower release. We'll let those notes really sustain. Let's pull back the threshold a little bit. Some makeup gain. So we're compressing kind of heavy there. We don't have we don't have the threshold move very much and we're already compressing about 7 dB. Again, that's a lot to do with the attack. If I back off the attack a little, a little. Again, it almost seems like once you once you start to press the release a little too much, slow it up a little too much, it almost becomes unusable. Oops. Okay, 
Okay, so that's on bass. Let's listen to it on acoustic guitars. So there's two acoustic guitars here on a bus. So again, let's make it a little bit faster attack maybe on this. Fast release. acoustic guitars again a little bit finicky i'm in a tough time with the attack and release to get this thing to really respond the way i want you can overdo it very quickly so that's something to keep in mind but it sounds good but it's a little finicky uh let's check out our keyboards here and we'll slow up the release a little maybe more of a slower attack and about a three to four to one ratio keys a little so we can hear them. So on this track, we have keyboards and pianos kind of coming into the same bus here. Um, so those are our three. So now let's just listen to what the accumulative effect of all these things are doing. So we have them all turned on right now, and then I'll just kind of turn them on and off and see what we kind of have. bad i gotta be honest not one of my favorite compressors and the way it sounds and the way it reacts it's a, i'm a little um a little um disappointed with the way this kind of reacts again you know universal audio usually most of it i mean you know i use universal audio you've been watching me for any length of time you know i'm a big universal audio uh, fan and i love most of their stuff i don't own this one i'm just demoing it for, for the purpose of this video but I got to say, I'm not crazy about the way this thing reacts and the way we're getting a lot of pumping and breathing. And it's hard to kind of dial it in. It seems very, very sensitive. Um, and again, I'm using them on buses, maybe on individual tracks. It may sound a little bit different. But I mean, overall sounds pretty good, but I'm not, it's not one of my favorites. Okay. Now I've shut these off. Let's do the same thing now with um, the, the PreSonus Studio One um, version of this. So on our drums here. Here we go. We'll turn this on. We'll see if it sounds, let's just kind of try to set it to about the same settings. Whoops, let me turn the power button on. Um, and see if it sounds any different. Does it react any differently? Right off the bat, I don't like the fact it's so much smaller looking. <laughs> so it's a little bit harder to read, to see here. But if I were to do this, and then if I were to open up the Universal Audio one, and we were to just set it at the same settings, let's just see what that kind of does here. So let's do that right now. So again, I know it'll be a little, 
we'll do, we'll do the same thing with the attack and the release here. We'll do the same thing with this. Um, we'll adjust our output game separately. We're gonna 100%. Oh, this one doesn't have, the, the, the PreSonus one does not have a parallel compression knob. That's okay, just, just so we know. So let's see what this sounds like, drums. Pulling back the threshold a little. Turn on the UA one. So here's universal audio. Let it loop around again. Free Sonus. See, we're not even getting the meter to move at the same threshold settings. Everything else is the same, right? Pretty much. So on, in this particular example, I kind of like the Studio One, the PreSonus one a little bit better because I'm not getting as much of that pumping and breathing. It seems like I'm getting a lot more consistency just by looking at the, uh, at the VU meter here, a little more consistency on the way the compressor is responding to the drum signal coming in. Where on the Universal Audio, it seems it's a little bit more finicky. The, set, the, the dials are a little bit more touch sensitive and even set at the same settings. The Universal Audio at certain parts of that drum track tend to pump and breathe a little bit too much um, and it's a little bit too noticeable. But I will say that the soft tube unit seems like it has a little more depth to it. And again, it's very, very similar. And I don't know how this audio comes across on YouTube. Um, I think the I think the PreSonus one sounds great. Sounds great, very similar. Um, it, it's gonna sound the same, obviously, very similar flavor. It seems like the Universal Audio one has a little more depth to me, but I still think I like the way that the PreSonus one responds a little bit more. Um, so let's now try this on, uh, we've got them both off here. Again, let's, we'll, we'll leave the PreSonus one on for now. Um, let's look at the same thing or listen to the same thing on bass here. So let's turn on the fat channel one. Okay, and let's again, let's set it to the same settings as the UA and let's just see again, compare, try to compare apples to apples as much as we can here. Uh, let's see, we'll do the ratio the same. We'll back off the attack a little bit and we'll slow down the release just a hair so it's all pretty much the same. Okay. So at the same threshold settings, we're getting about what? Three dB of compression. It's hard to see on this meter because it's so darn small, but about three dB on the Universal Audio one. You can see how much more you're getting, five to seven. Put the threshold set at the same spot. So we can hear the bass a little bit more. On this particular track bass, I like the PreSonus one quite a bit better than, than this other one. Um, so again, let's, uh, let's now go over to our acoustic guitars, try the same thing. Okay. 
Okay, let's set these to the same settings again. Turn on the Studio One. Uh, we'll keep, oh, sorry. I want to set it to the same as the, as the UA, just to, again, this is just a way to just kind of, sort of compare apples to apples. Now I realize, again, someone in the comments is going to say, well, they're two different hardware units. They're going to sound a little different. They're going to react it. I know all of that. Believe me, I know all of that. This is not, you know, this is not the most you know, scientific thing in the world. It's just to get a, just to get a flavor. How, do, how does one stack up against the other? Again, it's very subjective, I know. So here's the Studio One fat channel version of it on those acoustics. And we're compressing quite a bit here, about 10 dB. Oh, I have the threshold set in a different spot. My bad, my bad. I caught it, I caught it. <laughs> okay, back to the universe, or back to the Studio One. Very, very similar, very equal. I, I, I would, you know, either one of these, fantastic. If I had to pick one over the other, they sound great. Okay, let's leave the PreSonus one on. And then lastly, let's go to our keyboard track. We'll do the same kind of experiment. Heavily scientific experiment, right? <laughs> okay, let's pin this and let's bring the UA one in beneath it and we'll set it up to the same settings. Again, I will say, I wish the fat channel by PreSonus was larger. I mean, look at the difference between these two GUIs. So one thing I don't like about the fat channel by PreSonus is that all their plugins are very hard to see. They're very small. I wish there was a way to resize them. If you're watching this, anyone at PreSonus, any of the great engineers over there, and you know I love all of I'm a big Studio One fan, and I love these plugins that you guys have modeled here. You've done a really respectable job. Please make the GUIs larger or give us the ability, like Audify does, if you've seen any of my Audify plugin reviews, you can go in and size it yourself, or like FabFilter does that as well. That would be fantastic if you had nice big GUIs like this. All right, I'll get off my soapbox. All right, so let's uh, set the attack and release. Uh, we'll do about the same ratio. Okay, let's dial back the threshold a little bit. Let's see what we got here. Pretty sonus, I'll shut off the UA one. <laughs> Okay, so right off the bat with the threshold in the same spot, the, the soft tube universal audio one, a lot more compression. And sound-wise, they sound pretty darn equal to me. So um, let's shut off the, uh, the Universal Audio one again. Um, and what we'll do is, well, we don't need to compare. We just compared them all back and forth. This is really more about the Universal Audio version of it as opposed to the PreSonus one. But I figured I would give you guys a look-see um, and a little quick comparison there. So that is a look at our Universal Audio Soft Tube TubeTech CL1B. Again, decent sounding compressor. Again, not one of my favorites. If I had to pick this one or the Fat Channel one by PreSonus, and this, you know, in this little test here, I would pick the Fat Channel by PreSonus. I think they did a, a better job. I think the the controls are not as a little bit more realistic. The way that the VU meter responds to the way you're you're dealing with the attack release and the threshold. 
on the fat channel by PreSonus um, is more accurate and a little bit easier to deal with in this. This is very finicky to me. Um, but if you can get it dialed in right, it does have its place. Um, but, you know, I encourage you, if you're a UA user, go out and demo it for yourself. Um, and if you're not um, an owner of this plugin by PreSonus, you don't get this for free as part of the Fat Channel. This is one of the paid upgrades, um, but it's something you may want to check out. The, the, the thing about... PreSonus is that you can't demo these plugins. At least you can't as of the recording of this video. Maybe they'll change that um, where you can actually demo them before you buy them. But it is a great sounding plugin um, any, anyhow. So uh, yeah, if you're a UA user, go demo this. I think it's uh, a pretty good, maybe you'll have a little bit better success if you dial this around a little bit more, play with it a little bit more. You may get it tweaked in and maybe on certain instrumentation it sounds better than on others. Again, we did it all on buses. Um, so that's uh, so that's that's a look at our TubeTech CL1B by Universal Audio. Um, again, hit that like and subscribe button, share this video with others, um, leave comments below, let me know what you thought of this or if you own this, how you made out with this uh, particular compressor. Again, go out to homerecordingmadeeasy.com, get your five free mixing training courses, and don't forget to go out to mixingmadeeasy.net. And until the next plug-in review video, I've been Dave with homerecordingmadeeasy.com, and I will talk to you guys all soon. Take care.